Good afternoon, guys. It's working, bringing you a quick update on Bitcoin. Hope you guys are having a wonderful afternoon. Um, as before, guys, I want to start off by thanking everybody for uh, who has sent a tip over the last 24 hours, guys, or even before that, guys. Everyone's ever sent a tip, guys. Really appreciate it, guys. It uh, again, never necessary. Um, never, never feel obliged to, but uh, it is always, always appreciated. Um, and as always, guys, if you send me a direct message or even a public message, letting me know that you, um, it was you that sent the tip, I will always give you a shout out on the uh, on the next video. Uh, this video, guys, I want to personally thank. thank uh, let's see. Uh, Puff the Magic. Oh, <laughs> I, can't, I can't say the rest of that. Puff the Magic and I'll leave it there. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, I do appreciate the tip. Actually, you're very generous. I really appreciate that. Uh, but not gener generous enough for me to uh, to say your full name there. Uh, Two Pumped 397. Thank you very much, man. Very generous. Andy 375. Uh, very, very nice. Uh, um, appreciate uh, appreciate your contribution. And uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Sarah, don't play that. Sarah, don't play that. Thank you very much, Sarah. Don't play that. I again appreciate uh, appreciate the tips. Um, so if you do want to tip, guys, you'll uh, you'll find the addresses in the um, description link of the YouTube channel. But never ever feel um, feel obligated, guys. I just kind of do this as a way to get back. All right, we're looking at Bitcoin to the U.S. dollar four-hour chart on Coinbase. Last time we spoke, guys, I always want to start off with where we were last time we spoke because it you know not only does it uh, let you know that I'm holding myself accountable, but I want to hold myself accountable. Um, so, you know, I always want to make sure I start with where we were last time and then move forward rather than, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, that always gets me is when, you know, people seem to say one thing on one video and then completely forget what they said because the market did something else, you know, and move on in the next video as if they, you know, the prior video had not existed. Um, so I will never do that to you, whether I'm right, wrong, or indifferent, guys, I'll always start off where we were last time. And last time we were talking, we were talking, we were operating within this wedge here. Um, and uh, we were, which, you know, anytime you're looking at a wedge, guys, that's an equal, equal opportunity breakout. It could break up, could break down. Um, but I told you guys that we were looking at the pro the, uh, the very likely probability of coming back down and testing 7,500. Excuse me, the $7,500 support. Told you last time that um, you know, I was was not going to, even though a double bottom was certainly a possibility, that I was not going to play that in that we were seeing a lot of weakness all throughout the market, and certainly we were. Price broke down, and I have to admit, we had a, it did double bottom. Told you guys the possibility was there. I did not play this, much as I'd like to tell you that I did. I did not. Um, I, I, I remain uh, agnostic on this market, guys, and I will remain so until we either break 7500 or until we get a decide again decisively by decisively I mean just a four hour candle um, not sometimes I'll, I'll talk the bigger time frames but right now I'm talking about the four hour candle um, opening and closing below 7500 I will get extremely bull or excuse me extremely bearish not extremely but I, I will believe that we're coming back down to this area that we've been talking about between 7200 and 7000 to the upside if we can clear um, a four hour candle opening and closing above about 8200 really 8150 but I'd be a lot more comfortable with 8200 uh, we get above 80 200 with a, a open and close on the four hour, I'll start to get a little more bullish and start to think that we're going to come back up and test 85 to 8600, this range uh, uh, right up here. Price broke down a, a typical fake out maneuver, a typical bear trap where price breaks down, completely reverses course. The uh, double bottom came into play and then we're coming right back up and hitting the top of this wedge so basically a very very manipulated move in my opinion not really breaking out either way um, kind of doing a head fake in both directions and as of right now that's where we sit and you know th this is i i do you know Overall, even though I do think that we're going to be coming back here and testing this 72 to 7,000, uh, 7, it does look like if we can get a four-hour candle opening and closing above even 8,000, I do think that we're going to come back up and very likely test that 8,200. And this is the zone I told you yesterday. If price did end up breaking up, I told you to expect a rejection. I was going to be looking for, you know, nothing is a definite in crypto, guys. Again, I'll say it until I'm blue in the face. The only thing consistent about cryptocurrency is it consistently surprises. Never forget that. So, you know, nothing is a definite, but I told you to be looking for a rejection in the low 8,000s. So that would be, you know, anywhere between 82 um, and, uh, um, you know, 8,000 to 8,200. Um, and, you know, even though we could get a little deeper in that, we could, of course, wake up to this 8,400 because let's be real, this uh, 8,150 to 8,400, this has been the zone that's acted as resistance support. And I, I'm going to assume if we do end up testing this area again, that it will again become resistance. And I would look for a strong rejection. Now, do I have enough conviction to short this area up here? I do not. I, I mean, I will just be completely honest with you guys. I don't. This is why I say until we do take out 
this a decisive break below uh, 7550, um, or excuse me, below 7500 or above 8200 until we get a decisive break. Again, by decisive, I'm defining that on the lower time frame. So a four hour candle opening and closing above or below. Not until that happens will I will I um, um, you know change my my position to becoming more bullish or more bearish. I am agnostic right now. We're trading between support, major support. And what should be major resistance on the test? We'll have to wait and confirm that if we, you know, if and when we do get that test. But that is what I am going to be looking for: is the rejection off this zone. Um, again, do I have enough convention to sh to uh, conviction to short this area? No, I don't. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I, I do not. I will not be shorting this area right now, even though I, I, I am I'm leaning towards a rejection right here. I'm not going to short it because you know right now it's it's just Bitcoin is just showing all kinds of uncertainty and a lot of signs of manipulation, guys. Um, so typically, if everybody thinks it's going to do one thing, it'll often do the opposite. You know, the market makers will often drop, drop, drive price in the other direction. And speaking of market makers, let's go check longs and shorts very quickly. Let me go back to the four hour. Shorts continue to uh, basically just kind of moving sideways here for the last, uh, really the last 24 hours, a little bit more of a drop here, but nothing too significant. Longs are still outpacing shorts, but again, that's not because longs are stacking. That's just because longs dropped off and again are basically flat, which tells you what? Which tells you that, you know, any retail that is in this market is also, you know, very, very uncertain of which way price is going. Anybody in this market is very uncertain and not willing to put their money anywhere until we get more of a decisive move. Pulling back to the four hour here, four hour looking at our uh, moving averages, exponential moving averages, guys. We can see we're sitting at the top of the Bollinger Bands here, finding some resistance there. We are now on top of the 21 period exponential on the four hour chart, guys. Again, that is that is somewhat bullish, but we're again getting rejected at the top of the uh, top of the Bollinger Band there. Um, did find support on the 200 period moving average on the four hour chart. I don't put a lot of emphasis on the four hour chart, other than I do want to point this out. Whoop. Sorry, guys, didn't mean I went a little bit early. I do want to point out the fact that we are starting to once again get that 55 exponential, 21 exponential, and 8 exponential on the four hour starting to converge. And we're getting that in conjunction with the Bollinger Band starting to bottleneck here. Typically, when you see that, you can expect a larger move. It doesn't tell you if it's going up or going down, but it tells you that it, assuming this continues, assuming they continue to bottleneck, assuming the, the, the exponential, the 855 and 21 continue to converge on each other, that tells you a larger move is likely coming. All right, let's go ahead and check the uh, check the daily. Daily, we're still struggling to get back above the uh, the 21-day uh, EMA there. That is a very, very important EMA, in my opinion, guys. Finding resistance right at the 8-day EMA, what, that, what, that, that is relevant, in my opinion, because the 8-day EMA was acting su as support for so long and is now acting as resistance. Same with the 21 here. So, we'll, again, we'll have to wait and see kind of if, the, if we can get above the 21. If we get a daily candle closing above the 21 exponential, that's going to get my attention. If we get a daily candle tomorrow, both opening and closing, Closing above the 21 exponential. At that point, I do think we're going to take another run at 8,500. So we'll have to wait and see. But right now, again, I'm fairly agnostic, and the charts are showing me the same. All right, let's pull out to the weekly, see if there's anything uh, significant. Uh, nothing too significant. Again, just looking for a, uh, um, a, you know, just was suggesting a larger breakdown here, a little bit of weakness. But I will say that, uh, you know, the fact that we have not broken down below this eight week EMA as of yet. You know, that it does suggest that the bulls are not going, you know, without a fight. Um, and if this weekly candle can close back above 8,200, again, that, that would be a very, very bullish sign. We'll have to wait and see if that's what it does. But uh, I'm going to be keeping an eye on that uh, uh, very closely. Um, again, a break below the 21-week EMA would, again, get my attention very uh, fairly well. But uh, we can see that right the eight-week eight, eight EMA is sitting right around 52.50. Um, so I can certainly see us coming down to that 52 to uh, 50, or excuse me, not 52, 70, 7250, 7250. So I can certainly see us coming down here, hitting that 7200 and maybe wicking down even to 71, maybe even 7000, and then continuing to the upside. We can see that that 7000, looking at the weekly, was where this weekly chart split and where what where was resistance found support on the week of May the 13th and then continued up here. So that's a very relevant zone, guys. I'm going to be watching both of those. But yeah, if, if we do break below that eight day or that eight week EMA, it'll certainly get my attention. 
Checking daily volume, daily volume uh, pretty much in line with what we saw yesterday, guys, sitting at about 20.2 billion. Yesterday, we were at 19.4. You know, a little bit of an uptuck for now. We'll wait and see how it closes. But, uh, you know, overall, you know, does suggesting volume has pulled back a little bit, guys, suggesting that, uh, you know, people are kind of in a watch and wait mode. Wait and see how this, uh, wait and see uh, what uh, or how this thing ends up breaking. Again, watching, uh, watching support, watching resistance, waiting to see which one breaks. And no one's really willing to put their money anywhere until they get um, a decisive move. And somebody asked me yesterday, Day. Um, it was kind of a funny question. They said uh, because of my uh, video yesterday, I, I I told you guys ahead of time. It, you know, looked like we were going to break down to 7,500, but I was not going to play the bounce if we did get the bounce, guys, because I didn't have you know the confidence to do that. And of course, I'm a more I'm a more conservative trader, as you guys know. So you know, I'll take the I'll take the what looks like an almost sure thing. Nothing is a sure thing, of course, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll take that. And if I'm if I'm uncertain at all, I, I'm I have no problem just sitting that out, guys. And that's worked. That that strategy has worked very well for me. Um, but so I did not take the trade. And somebody asked, well, hey, aren't you uh, you know, aren't you kicking yourself for not taking that trade? And well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess if you're asking me if I could do it all over again, would I, with the benefit of hindsight? Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to take that trade. Love to take that bounce. You know, if I had a crystal ball, I'd, you know, I could, I'd, I'd have a hundred percent success rate, which nobody has. But you know, it, hindsight is always twenty twenty. Remember that. So no, you know, if, you know, assuming that I did not have a crystal ball and I saw the exact same setup as I did yesterday, would I, would I take the trade? Um, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Um, you know, yeah. I, I, you know, all you can do is go on basically, you know, what you, you know, all you can do is show is look at what the chart is telling you guys, look at probability and, and, and then assess your own risk you know, uh, what, what the, assess the, the risk that you're willing to take and then, you know, take a trade or don't take a trade. It's never financial advice. I always tell you guys, obviously, obviously you make your own decisions. I'm not a financial advisor. It's not financial advice. But for me, you know, the, 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 the risk wasn't there, you know, the, the, um, you know, the, the, Risk to reward, in my mind, you know, was not risk to reward in a in a in a dollar sense because yes, that was there, but just the probability, guys, pushing my luck. The first time I was all over this, you guys know this. The second time I just wasn't willing to do it, guys. I'm not. Uh, I'm a, a more conservative trader, so you know, it, it, take that for what it's worth. Um, so yes, obviously, if I had the benefit of hindsight, yes, I would take a trade, a successful trade. But without the benefit of hindsight, guys, you know, it's uh, yeah, you, everybody's got to make their own call. Everybody's got to do their own thing. Um, so anyway, just wanted to uh, just wanted to. Uh, um, address that very, very quickly. All right, I'm going to go ahead and wrap Bitcoin there. Let's quickly run through, through some uh, some altcoins, starting off with uh, with EOS, with EOS or EOS, depending on uh, on which side of the aisle you're on. I think, hasn't it been officially confirmed that we are now EOS, I think? Um, anyway, I can't keep up with it all. Looking at the chart, guys, EOS, EOS has been, EOS, EOS, I'll just call it EOS for now, um, has been uh, has been very impressive, in my opinion, guys. This sick, let me pull out for the weekly, because uh, I, I pointed this out last time. Last time we spoke, um, it was it was sitting, I think, around uh, uh, 64 or $6.45, uh, $6 uh, somewhere around, it, it was right around where it is now. Um, and I told you that it looked like it was going to come back down and test this area between 590 and 610. That is a major area of support, guys, pulling out on the weekly, guys. You can just see it. This was the area that was uh, uh, massive. Massive resistance back in September, October of 2018 became resistance again in April, and then finally smashed through it in May. Um, and then we came back around, and what was resistance acted as support. Then it took off, of course, to our high of about 860 before coming back down here. Um, it, this 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 support has has turned out to be fairly important. Excuse me. Fairly impressive so far, guys. I do have to say. Now I do think this is following Bitcoin quite uh, quite closely. In fact, I would call. This six dollar support with EOS basically the same as the uh, seven uh, seven thousand five hundred dollar support with Bitcoin. In other words, I do think if Bitcoin breaks below seventy decisively, decisively breaks below seventy five hundred, guys, please always understand my uh, my terms. When I when I'm talking about breaking a support or resistance, I'm talking about a decisive break. In other words, either a four hour candle opening and closing. If we're looking at the smaller time frames or the the larger time frames, we're talking about a daily candle opening and closing. So yes, um, that that's that's typically what I'm looking at when we're talking about. Uh, support and resistance, a decisive break, not wicking below because we wick up above and below resistance all the time. We're looking, talking about a decisive break. That's what you need to make your decisions on. So, you know, as of now, we've come back down, tested this support uh, uh, one, two times here, um, did create a lower low the last time here coming all the way down to about 593. Um, which you know, I got I got a uh, an order filled there actually, which uh, turned out to be uh, turned out to work out fairly well. Um, but we are now coming up. And if I zoom in here, 
We are not coming up against the what? The the 21 exponential on the four hour chart, which is now acting as a fairly decent resistance. Um, and of course, we can see that that is also in confluence with where we found support here, and then support turned into resistance. Uh, support on the fourth, June the fourth, resistance became resistance on June the fifth. Um, so this is a critical zone. If we can get up above this zone and start trading above about 675, if we can start trading above 670, 675 ish. In other words, if we can get a four hour candle opening a closing above 675, then I get a little more bullish. And then I think we're going to take another shot at coming into this $7 to 720 zone. This zone right here, guys, I think there's a real chance that we get into that zone. Uh, coming in here to the daily, um, you know, that that's going to be, that also um, has perfect confluence that I, I actually, this was not planned. Um, that has perfect confluence with the 21 day EMA. So yeah, that is a very, very relevant zone. If we can start trading above, if we can get a four hour candle opening and closing above 675, I do become short term bullish on on EOS. Um, we'll have to wait and see. Now, I do think it's going to come back down with Bitcoin. I do think Bitcoin is going to come back down eventually, even if we have some temporary upside. I think Bitcoin is going to come down and test 7,200. And I do think EOS is going to come back down and, and likely at least wick below this area of support right here. Now, do we have a decisive break below? I wouldn't say, but I, 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 I don't think so. But I do think it's likely that we wick below this 590 to 610 uh, support. And I do think that we come down as low as possibly uh, 5 30 ish if and when Bitcoin does break below that 575, it comes down and tests that 7000 to $7,200 area. I do believe that EOS comes down to about 530 to 545 um, at the same time. But until that happens, until Bitcoin does break 570 or uh, does break uh, 77 uh, uh, seven thousand five hundred dollars. Did I say five seventy five again, guys? I, 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 sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. But yeah, Bitcoin co likely coming down and testing seventy two hundred. If, if and when that happens, I think EOS likely comes down and tests approximately five dollars and thirty five cents to five thirty ish. Even though it could be a very quick wick and then a a, a strong um, bounce off of that zone, um, I do think that's a poss a, a real possibility. I've got buy order sitting down here at about five thirty. Uh, really about 5:31 um, to be to be to be very precise. Um, so I'm you know looking for a decent bounce off that zone. Um, same with Bitcoin. I've got buy orders sitting between seven ladder between 7,000 and 7,200, expecting a nice little bounce off that zone. Even if it doesn't hold, I would expect a scalpable, a tradable bounce off of that zone um, at the very very least. But uh, but again, just to kind of give you an idea of what I'm looking at with EOS guys, um, a you know until Bitcoin does break 7,500, you know it you know this this base this six dot six five ninety to six 10 base is holding strong. And if we do get above uh, trading above uh, 675, I think we take another run at this $7 to 725 um, area of what should be re was acting as support, what should act as resistance on the way back up. All right. All right, let's wrap EOS there. Quickly looking at Binance Coin, BNB. Um, B ah, wow, actually, BNB looks pretty strong. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's back above the 21 day EMA. We didn't even have, it did not have a decisive break below the 21 day EMA. We wicked, or not wicked below it, but we did close below it here on June the 4th, came back right back above it on June the 5th. We ha did not have a daily candle opening and closing below the 21 day EMA, which would be the definition of breaking that re that uh, that area, that exponential. So yeah, that is that is bullish as of now. It does look to me like it's operating within a, uh, a descending broadening wedge, which typically does break to the upside here. But let's be honest, even even though I do think BNB is is a one of the one of the more solid coins out there, guys. Certainly a good long term hold in my opinion. Not financial advice, not a financial advisor, but uh, but it, it is one of the stronger coins in my opinion, guys. Um, and right now it is looking like it's got some strength. We are finding some resistance right there at about that 30, 3140, 3150 area. Um, I do think if we can take that out decisively if we can and let me go into the four hour here guys so uh um, i'm clear of what because now we're talking smaller time frames so yeah if we uh, looking at this guy's looking at that about a 30 uh th yeah 31 actually it's going to be a little bit higher than that it's going to be about 31 3180 if we take out 3180 on the four hour 31 uh or if we get a four hour candle opening and closing above 3180 i do think it takes another shot um or, or rises up here about another dollar dollar 30 to about 33 15. Um, and this is this will be a real test at 3315, guys. That'll also bring it to the top of what looks like to me again a descending broadening wedge. So this descending resistance line here that'll come that'll come in nicely with what also looks like resistance right around that 3330 area. If that does get taken out, I do think that we take a very quick shot at the uh, at the high of about what is the high 3553 uh, looks like the high at least. Uh, 
on Binance here on on the uh, tether pairing. Looks like about 33.53 guys, and I, I do think if at that point it does take another shot at that, it very likely takes that out and sets a uh, uh, sets a new high. Uh, if we come over here and go, we are seeing a lot of structure with Binance Coin. Uh, if we just go swing low, swing high, we can see, yeah, it hit perfectly right off the 382. If we just look at this overall structure here, right off the 382 fib, finding resistance again at, at about the uh, the 236, which again tells me that's a very, very relevant zone. Uh, let's go back here to the daily just because I'm curious about something. If we just take this all into account and we go swing high, swing low, and kind of flip it, uh, yeah, we're right at right at the 382 actually in the other day, yeah, right at the 382. And look at that, guys. We can see right around that 3330 area. That's that's right in the side of that golden pocket. That's a very relevant zone, just looking at this. So yeah, that's right inside the golden pocket between the 618 and the uh and the 65 fifth level, also known as the golden pocket, guys. So yeah, if we can take that out, I do think that we have a good shot at setting a new a uh, a new all-time high for Binance coin if we can take out that 33 uh 3330 ish. Um and again if we can if we can get above that uh, really 3130 i do think we take a shot at 3330 so those are the areas to watch 3330 look for a decisive or 3130 look for a decisive break above that but decisively in a four-hour candle opening and closing then i think we come up to 3330 where you're going to again look for another decisive break four-hour candle opening and closing that'll take it above that uh, uh, descending resistance line of this wedge and at that point if that happens i think we come up and create a new uh a new high Although I would, uh, I'd be skeptical of where I get in. I'd probably get in if you're going to scalp this. I'd get in and I get right back out at about 35.30, um, and then, or at the very least, increase your stop loss and then just let it run at that point. I wouldn't get caught in this trade, guys, because again, if if Bitcoin does come back down, Binance Coin is going to come right back down with it. All right, quickly looking at Litecoin. Wow, actually, Litecoin is very impressive. Litecoin is. Uh, we had, yeah, we're, we're back above that 110 and that 110, if you guys saw my, um, you know, my prior analysis on Litecoin before we broke 110, I told you that was a critical zone guys. That was that, that 110 acted as support all throughout 2018 and, uh, you know, coming back up here, guys, it's, we can see, we've just kind of been snaking around it here, did come back down and retested as we discussed last time, this, uh, this area right at about $100, um, really it was about 101, but that was a very critical zone as well. That was the area that was resistance here again, resistance resistance again here and then started acting as supports come back down again even though we wicked below it here it was a very quick wick the body the, the support basically did hold and we are in, in it you can also see again just showing the structure in this market especially with litecoin it's sitting right on top again the 21 day ema showing you why that is such a very very relevant exponential guys um and you know didn't break below it um wicked below it but did not decisively break below it and of course now we're off to the races and we are hitting a very critical zone uh with litecoin point in my opinion guys this area right here that we're currently stuck up against right between about 115 and 117 that's a critical zone guys if we can get even a four hour candle let me switch to the four hour if we can get even a four hour candle opening and closing above this zone i do think that we take another shot of it at at least 121 and that is that's going to be a critical zone to watch if we can get above 121 and start consolidating in this zone anywhere between 121 and 125 we can just start consolidating into that zone that extremely extremely bullish sign um uh for litecoin at that time if we can get a um and now i'm going to talk about the higher time frame so if we can get a daily candle both opening and closing above 121 i do think there's a very good chance that we take a shot that we clear this zone at about again between about 121 and 125 i think there's a very good chance that we clear this zone and we come back up and test about 140. now if Bitcoin does dump, Litecoin will dump as well. But uh, but I have to say, if, if I'm just looking at this chart independently, this chart does, if, if we can get above its current area, uh, which again, uh, a decisive break above about 117, if we can get a, a four hour candle opening and closing above 117, this chart looks bullish. This chart does look bullish to me. Now again, Bitcoin could ruin that, it, you know, I do, but it, it does bode well with a lot of these altcoins guys showing that it, it seems like they're trying to decouple. They aren't able to, but the, the signs are there, and I do think it's just a matter of time before the, uh, some of these stronger altcoins do decouple from Bitcoin. Again, we're not there yet. Do not misunderstand me. If Bitcoin crashes, Litecoin is very, very likely going to crash along with it. So please don't misunderstand me, guys. But, uh, but overall, the, the chart does look bullish. Now, to the downside, if we do break below, a decisive break below 110 this time, guys. 
Uh, uh, by decisive this time, I'm talking about the larger time frame, the daily. If we get a daily candle opening and closing below 110, I do think we're quickly going to come back down to this $100 range, guys, and that'll be a major test. If $100 does break, if we get a decisive break below 100, I do think it's a quick drop down to about 91 at least. Um, so again, we'll have to watch and wait and see, but uh, it, it is a very, very bullish sign. So I, you know, honestly, Rather than even watching those price points, I'd, I'd watch this this uh, 21 exponential on the daily. If we get a daily candle opening and closing below the 21 exponential, guys, we're coming back down to about 91, 91 ish, 90 to 91. Um, I think will be a very logical target, and that would come in nicely. I would have a lot of confluence, which are a with our ascending support line here that I've been pointing out for uh, that's been in place for quite some time, uh, in both back in the, the end of 2018. All right, I'm gonna quit Litecoin there. Quickly checking Ethereum. Uh, Ethereum is basically snaking around the 21-day EMA here. Um, this uh, this support between 220 and 230 has held very well. Um, it's actually been a very, very impressive support as of now. Um, I, let's see. Looks to me like right now, yeah, right now it's sitting right at a, a fairly decent area of resistance right now here um it that sits at about yeah about two let's call it 250 249 really but let's call it about 250 um so yeah i need to see a let me get to the four hour here yeah yeah four hour actually makes a lot more sense so yeah i need to see and it's also sitting right finding resistance right on top of that 21 exponential on the four hour chart so yeah i need to see a four hour open and close above 250 if we do get a four hour opening and closing above 250 i do think we take another shot at this area right here which is at about 270 to 270 and really 272 ish um, i do think that yeah there's a good chance that we take another shot at that um, as of now sitting right at resistance um, i wouldn't be surprised to see it bounce back and forth between about 232 and 249 ish um, if we do break below about if we get a decisive break below by decisive i'm talking the smaller time frames now so a four hour candle opening and closing below about 230 i do think at that point we're quickly going to come down to about 120 and i'm not even sure that 120 holds um again we'll have to wait and see i'm i would be very agnostic until we do break below 120 if we do break below 120 just a four hour candle opening and closing below 120 as i told you guys from my last few updates at that point i think it's a very quick drop to about 185 and 185 is a must buy again not financial advice just my opinion this is what i'll be doing when if we do ever see 185 that is in my opinion just going to that is going to be a must buy a, a an ethereum at 185 is a must buy in my opinion guys that's where i'll be going in uh, a little bit uh, a little bit heavier until then um i remain agnostic until we do clear either this support between one to uh, 120 and 130 or we break above resistance at about two uh, decisively. Again, I'm always talking about decisively. A decisive break above resistance at about 270 uh, to about 275-ish. All right, we'll wrap Ethereum there. Quickly looking at XRP. Uh, X, yeah, actually, I mean, so crazy, man. XRP actually does look does look fairly bullish as well, and it does look like it's starting to consolidate in a bit of a larger wedge pattern right here so overall yeah it does look like we're starting to consolidate uh in in a it does look like price is starting to get squeezed we are above the 21 exponential 21 day exponential moving average which again is a bullish sign we are finding resistance uh right at the top of this zone here, which we can see was resistance in the past, became support, even though it's been a it's it's been a sloppy. I mean, this is just a sloppy chart, guys. It, it is. It's uh yeah, but I, again, still nonetheless, this is a very very relevant zone. I apologize by the way if you guys hear a uh, what sounds like a lawnmower in the background. My uh, my yard guy is mowing the lawn, so it is a lawnmower. Um, but so I apologize if you guys hear that. Um, so anyway, if we do get a decisive break above this zone, guys, by I'm looking at the the higher time frames now. So if we get a daily candle, both opening and closing above about uh 425 um uh, i you know i well i don't even want to say that because yeah yeah we're going to come up here but this this is it does look like we are consolidating here so i can certainly see us a, a scenario where we break up here quickly hit the top of this back down and then either we break up or we or we just break down from its uh from from this point right here so i i, I don't I'm, I'm hesitant to give you any kind of advice on Ripple at this point. Very agnostic on Ripple. Two areas I'm watching, this area right here at about 44. 
4745. If we get a daily candle opening and closing above that, I do think we come up here and test these prior highs. I do think we come up and test at least 47, um, but very, very likely um, take, uh, well, I don't want to say likely. I, at least we test about 47 to 47 too, um, in my opinion. To the uh, to the downside, guys, um, we could get rejected right where we are, come back down and be watching this 21 exponential, but more importantly than that, I'll be watching this ascending support line here. Um, which really is 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 lining up almost perfectly with the with uh, with about 39. So that's really not much of a trade at all. Um, yeah, I would stay I would stay out of XRP at the moment, guys. In my opinion, guys, not financial advice, never financial advice, but just personally. I wouldn't touch SR XRP, guys. It uh, Again, I remain fairly agnostic. I hate to keep repeating myself, and I know that's frustrating to hear from an analyst, guys, but until we until Bitcoin decisively makes its move, all these coins are basically consolidating between resistance and support. And you know, even though it does look like a likely breakout for all of this is is, is very likely in the next you know few days to you know maybe maybe anywhere between you know two to five days from now, um, it's just it's, it's, it's more of a shot in the dark unless you're scalping. And if you're scalping guys very quick, um, you know, in and out, yeah. Could I see us, uh, bouncing off this zone, coming back down, hitting about 40 and then coming back a uh, 40 cents and then coming right back up and testing against uh, 42 to, uh, to about 40, 42, five to about 43, two. Yeah, absolutely. Would I play that? No, I'm not going to play that at all. I, there's a time to just be, to, to just sit back grab your popcorn and to watch the show. And then there's a time to be aggressive. I don't think this is the time to be aggressive in my opinion, guys. I think this is the time to kind of sit back and just enjoy the show. All right, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things there, guys. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. As always, we appreciate an upvote. If you have enjoyed this content, until next time, guys, please trade safe. Take care of yourselves. This is working.